twin game, that means let's go. Hey. Hey, job, my friends, and welcome aboard Kilimanjaro Safaris. My name is Nolan, and I will be your safari guide here today on the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. And before we get going here, a few important safety reminders. As always, be sure to remain seated at all times with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the truck. And for the safety of those around you, be sure to keep those facial coverings on over your nose and your mouth at all times. It does get a little bumpy out here, so be sure to hold on to any loose items that could fall from the truck. I can't stop to pick anything that is dropped. And if you look up above your head, you'll have that animal spotting guy. Feel free to take all the pictures of these animals that you would like. We just ask that you be respectful of them, as always. Now, here on the right-hand side, there's an okapi right there over there. You can see it's black and white stripes on its hind legs. It looks a little bit like a zebra. It's actually the closest known relative of a giraffe. You can tell by its similar skull shape and long prehensile tongue that are identical to the giraffes. Now here on our left, you'll see a few of these dark tan striped animals. These are called bongos. Now, both male and female bongos have those short little horns you see there. They're nice and slicked back. This way they can move quickly through the brush of the forest, not getting caught in any trees or branches. Now, I'm going a little fast here because up on the left, we see a very close look at a female bongo here. There's actually a male one licking this tree up here. Now, there's hardly any difference between the male and female bongo. This male bongo just has a little bit darker fur on his neck. Now we are getting a little bit closer look at them here on the right and also on top you can uh sorry you can see him doing some eating there but way up top there there's also a greater kudu up there that is a female kudu we can tell because she does not have long horns like the male does now here on the left hand side another horned animal here on the left is the black rhinoceros you can see him doing a little Hello. bit of eating up there now look closely at his facial structure this is the main difference between the black and white rhinos the black rhino has a very round facial structure with a prehensile upper lip. And that prehensile upper lip helps it move around and grab onto his food. Kind of like how we grab onto our food with our hands, they grab onto their food with that upper lip of theirs. Now here on the right, you get another look at these bongos and then that greater kudu right behind him. And you get another look at this black rhino here on the left as well. bit of caution here but you can see that saddle-billed storks there's actually two of them walking around over there those very large birds are called saddle-billed storks now i see a picture of it on your spotting guide as well they have a very bright orange beak that's what they use to communicate with other saddle-billed storks so that's what they use to talk to one another they can stand about five feet tall and have to a nine foot long wingspan so very large birds all right now that we are out of the interior forest i can slow down a little bit and start uh stopping a little bit for you guys but we are introducing those new animals there so appreciate your patience now as you head on down this hill we are heading into the safi river and down in the safi river a lot of animals like to spend their time in or around water such as this nile hippopotamus here on our right hand side now the Nile Hippo can weigh up to 5,500 pounds. You'll see one there. You actually see a whole group of them here on the left-hand right side as well. Now a Nile Hippo can weigh up to 5,500 pounds. They're the second largest animal in all of Africa. They spend a lot of time under the water to keep themselves cool. As you can see, they have their eyes, ears, and nose on top of their head. So when they are submerged in this water, they're, uh, they're able to see, breathe, and hear. So it's a very nice uh, way to stay cool for them. Obviously, we as humans stay cool by sweating, but they sweat, uh, they use the water to do it for them. Now here on the left, you'll see a bunch of large birds. If you look closely, you'll see the skin underneath those birds' feathers is pink. That's how they get their name, the pink-backed pelican. And the pink-backed pelican's skin turns a very bright shade of pink during mating season. Uh, they also travel in very large groups known as flocks. Usually a flock of pink-backed pelicans can have 32 to up to 500 pairs in each flock. Now as we head on by that load of uh, hippos, we're coming up on another group of Nile animals. That is the Nile crocodile here on our left hand side. Now you can see them cuddling back there, that's really cute. Nile crocodile is the largest crocodile species in the world. They weigh about a 2,000 pound per square inch bite. So I would advise remaining seated as we cross on over this bridge here. Now they are about 16 to 20 feet long when they are fully grown, making them the largest crocodile species in the world. They can get about 16 to 20 feet. strong snapping bite that can actually crush bones if they needed to. Now the Nile crocodile, when it's got its jaws wide open, it's actually usually cooling itself off. It's called ectothermic cooling. That's how they cool themselves off. It's actually the same way that dogs will cool off as well. Now as you head around this corner and out of the Safi River, which is known for its uh, damp climate, we're heading out towards a much drier climate in that of the savannah. Now, the savannah is mostly known for a hot, dry climate, but it's also known for some of the animals who live out there. You may have heard of some of them, like the giraffe, the zebra, even the African elephants known to live out here. So who knows, we could be lucky to see some of those today. 
And here on our left hand side, if you look closely down towards the end of this hill, you get a nice overlook of the savannah and then you can see a few of those giraffes walking around down there. Now as we head on down here, height is a very nice advantage to have, so animals like this huge giraffe coming up on our right hand side have a very nice advantage over the animals down below. Oh, looks like some of these wildebeest are running around up here as well. Now there on the right, you get a little good look at that giraffe hanging out there behind that tree. They are very, very tall, but you actually see a few baby giraffes walking around with them out there. Now a newborn baby giraffe stands about six feet tall and then they can get up to 20 feet tall when they are fully grown. But you can see the whole group of them walking down there with a few of those babies with them. Now a group of giraffes makes a whole lot of sense. It is called a tower of giraffes since they tower on over the savannah with their immense height. And you can another look at this one doing a little bit of eating here. Now see if you can see that long prehensile tongue stick on out of his mouth there. That long tongue can get about 18 inches in length. It is extremely long and extremely strong uh, muscle for them. They can reach out of that uh, their mouths with that tongue, wrap it around whatever they need, and then pull it back into their mouths and eat it. So that's what you see them doing here. Uh, same thing as that okapi we saw earlier. Now we are about seven feet off the ground here, and if you look closely, you'll see we're about at eye level with this giraffe's body. So that's how high up off the ground they are, about six or seven feet, so you can get a good idea just how big they are. Now here on the left, you also see a group of African wild dogs sitting down underneath this cave. African wild dogs are known for their fur patterns, you see there. They kind of look like they've been painted on them. That's how they get their nickname, the Painted Dogs. We get one last look at those painted dogs as we come up on this group of wildebeest over here on our left hand side. You saw them running around a little bit earlier. There's also a little sable antelope hanging out in the tree line up there if you were wondering what that uh, one is. Now here on the left you get a very close look at this wildebeest. They tend to travel in these large groups together in order to stay well protected. Now they can be a little unpredictable when they start running so I'm going to use a little bit of caution here. Uh, now they travel in these large groups because on their own they're very vulnerable or susceptible to predators but when they travel in large groups. Sorry, they can protect each other a little bit better here. Now they are unpredictable. They run in those really random patterns, so that's how they can help protect themselves. And they travel in large groups known as stampedes. Uh, they'll usually migrate about 500 to 1,000 miles each year. Now when they sit down or go to bed at night, they will actually sit facing different directions. That way they can help protect the rest of the group, make sure nobody gets stuck up on. Now here on the left, you can get, uh, we're coming up on this tower of giraffes here in just a moment. But we'll get another look at that one over there on the right doing some eating. And this other male giraffe coming up here on the right as well. Now these are Maasai giraffes. We know by the irregular shape pattern found throughout their bodies. Um, yeah, that's how we know they are Maasai giraffes. As I said, they stand very high up off the ground. So because of this, they hardly ever like to sit down. If they do sit down, it'll be for small increments of about 20 to 45 minutes. Uh, because when they're standing up, they're almost invincible. No predator is really going to mess with them because of how tall they are. We can get a good look at this one here while we wait for the rest of that group to move on out of the way here. As I said, a group of giraffes is called a tower since they tower on over the savannah. But as we head a little bit further here, I see a few other groups of animals hanging out on top of the ridge here on the right. Now, way on top of the hill there, you'll see a few of those Hartman's Mountain Zebras. And a little bit closer to us here are these Angoli cattle. Now, Hartman's Mountain Zebras have very wide stripes on their backside. That's how we know they are Hartman's Mountain Zebras. In addition to that, a group of them is called a Dazzle of Zebras, which makes little to no sense, but that is okay. We are coming up on this group of Ancoli cattle, though, with the very, very large and very wide horns. The Ancoli cattle's horns, when fully grown, can actually get about six feet wide from tip to tip. And although they're very large, they're very, very lightweight. They have a honeycomb structure on the inside of those horns that is lined with blood vessels. So they use these long horns to actually cool themselves off when it gets a little hot out here on the savannah. Their bodies will naturally send their blood flowing to the top of their horns, and on their way back down, it'll help cool their body temperatures off quite a bit. So you get a pretty good look at how big these horns are here. The males in the back there, you can see, has very large horns if he ever sticks those ones up. But you can get a good idea just how wide they are, at least. So they're doing a little bit of grazing there. The Ancoli cattle is actually called the Watusi cattle sometimes because of the Watusi tribe that was the first to domesticate these animals. They are the only domesticated animal that lives out here uh, in the savannah, of course. <clears throat> Looks like we're waiting for this tower of giraffes to get all moving here again. We'll hang out with these Ancoli cattle just a little bit. Now, way on top of this hillside, I said there. Oh, just kidding. Now we can see those baby giraffes walking around, though. It's pretty cute. Now, if you look up to the left here, by this uh, little tree here, that's where you'll see this tower of giraffes walking around. Now, you can see them all different shapes and sizes. You have the full-grown giraffes, uh, like this one up in front here. You have a few teenagers there, and then those little babies hanging out uh, near that bush over there. 
Those baby giraffes don't have the warmest welcome into the world. They usually have about a six foot drop to the floor since their mothers give birth standing up. As soon as they hit the floor, uh, they definitely start to learn how to walk. They usually learn to walk within the first hour of being born, which is very impressive because of the long, uh, lanky bodies they have there. Oh, there goes that Elon running around. Interesting. <laughs> I did see a Patterson's Elon move around here. Let's see if we can see her poke out of one of these bushes, maybe. Yeah. Looks like our animal cares team is trying to get them out of the road here. <laughs> The last round I took, they were stopped in the road for 20 minutes. So, hopefully that is not the case here. Obviously here at Animal Kingdom, the animals have the right of way. They can do whatever they like, but if we can nudge them in the right direction, it's nice. I do see my favorite animal sticking out there, though. I'm excited. <laughs> so right behind these giraffes, you can see that little gray animal speaking out there. That's my personal favorite animal called the Patterson's Elon. You can see a picture of it on your spotting guide. Now I have a lot to say about this animal, but it doesn't look like he's doing what I want him to do today. The reason he's my favorite animal is because he has short little horns on his head. Uh, but in order to attract females during mating season, he digs his horns into the ground and gives himself a little flower crown on top of his head. So you'll sometimes see them with uh, dirt, some grass, some um, leaves, palm fronds, anything. Oh, look, a giraffe. <laughs> huh. Surprise. Where did, uh, I don't know where that came from, but I'm just going to hang out here. Hello. Oh, this is so adorable. Anyways, uh, I'm sad. I didn't know he was right there. I could have told you just how big he is. You could tell very, very large. Oh, and now we're getting moving works for me. All right. Now as we do get closer to this giraffe, that's probably going to walk directly in front of us in just a second. Oh, he's being polite. Now we can get a better look at those zebras up there as well. Those are Hartman's Mountain, as I said, because of their wide stripes on their backside. They get a little bit closer as you head towards the front of their faces. Now zebra stripe patterns are actually all unique. They're all slightly different in their each in, um, in their own individual way. They're pretty similar to their mother stripe patterns, so that's kind of how they tell each other apart when they're traveling in those dazzles of zebras. Ooh, now this is, okay. Oh, you can't really see it from here. That Patterson's Elon right there, the like little gray animal sticking out, he's putting a little flower crown on his head right now. You might be able to see him peek up with some grass on top of his head. That's what I was talking about, how he likes to decorate his horns for the females. They can get a little better look at these giraffes as we head on by here. I'm just gonna use caution, but this is the largest one of the group here. Uh, this is a female giraffe, but you can tell just how far their bodies are up the ground, which is why they have about that six foot drop to the floor when they're born. Now we'll just wait for this one to cross. Now the ones behind this one look like they're okay. <laughs> All right, looks like they're just finishing making their way over here, but you can see the rest of this tower here. Get a good idea just how small these babies are. As I said, they're probably taller than most of us on this truck. They're a few months old, so they're probably getting closer to seven feet tall, uh, close uh, than as opposed to that six foot height that they're born at. Oh, they're so close. He's almost out of the road here. Now, giraffes do have those long necks. They're very flexible, though, so they can bend all the way down to the ground if they want to, even when they are 20 feet tall. When they do bend down to the ground, oh, look at how small this one is. That's so cute. When they do bend them down to the ground, it is uh, a little awkward. They kind of do the splits with their front uh, hoofs, and then they reach down with those long necks of theirs. That's how they get drinks of water and stuff like that. Now, everyone's out of the way, except for this lonely baby giraffe. Oh, looks like she's getting on moving here. So we got one last look at these giraffes. It's pretty interesting how they move in a group right here, because you can tell this one's kind of looking at me, make sure I don't get anywhere close to this baby here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, now it looks like we're ready to get on going. One last look at how this tiny little baby giraffe here. Oh. 
And then over here on the right, get one last look at those Patterson's eel in there as well. And I do have to call the warden back, but I will be right back here. species called the mandrel. If you look closely there, sitting on the rock, you will see a female mandrel. Unfortunately, I can't stop for any of these animals, but that is a female mandrel. Now, the male mandrel is the largest monkey species in the entire world, weighing up to 100 pounds fully grown. Now, about 11,900 pounds heavier than that male mandrel is the African elephant here on our right-hand side. Now, the African elephant is huge. It can weigh up to 12,000 pounds. You can see those big ears on their head. They're kind of shaped like the continent of Africa. Those ears are what they use to cool themselves off. Similar to the Ancoli cattle's horns, they have a lot of blood vessels in their ears. So when they flap them back and forth, they can uh, cool themselves off, usually about 15 degrees, just by flapping those bad boys back and forth. Now, elephants do weigh about 12,000 pounds, and they got to keep those bodies powered somehow, so they eat a lot during the day. They usually eat about, um, sorry, 280 pounds of grass a day. So they spend most of that day time eating uh, in order to power those big bodies of theirs. Now, surprisingly, elephants do have very sensitive skin. That skin can get easily sunburned or bitten by bugs, sometimes even impacted as things as small as rain droplets. So if it's raining exceptionally hard, they'll find their way into a body of water, and usually to protect that skin, they'll throw dirt and mud on their backs in order to keep themselves nice and uh, nice and well protected. Now, there is another African elephant coming up here on our left-hand side. Looks like we may have stumbled upon a group of female elephants. Female elephants tend to travel in larger groups, while the male elephants, like the one we saw back there, tend to travel alone or in smaller bachelor herds. And we are coming up on a few of them. You might be able to see them through here, but there should be a gap in the foliage here on the left in just a moment. Now, they said these female elephants travel together while they raise their young, as opposed to the male elephants that usually travel alone. But there on the left, you can get a good idea just how large those tusks can get there. And this is the matriarch or the mother of this group of African elephants here. I don't really see her babies walking around yet, uh, but you can see her very, very large tusks there, meaning she is uh, very, uh, a little bit older than the others. She's very, um, yeah, full grown there. Now you can tell the age of an African elephant by the size of those tusks, and usually by their size as well. Elephants have very long lifetimes, kind of like humans do. They usually live about 80 years old uh, at maximum. Uh, yeah, they're very, uh, they have very long childhoods as well. They usually be in that childhood state for about 15 to 18 years as well. Now as we do around this corner, I see a few more African elephants coming up here on top of this grass on our left hand side. You can see them walking around as we drive by this group of greater flamingos here on our left. The greater flamingo is the lightest shaded pink of any flamingo species in the world. They're actually naturally gray in color, but as they grow older, they start to lose that gray color on their feathers from all the brine shrimp that they eat. You can get a little better look at that African elephant walking around back there, waving that shrunk back and forth, though. Uh, as we get one last look at this group of greater flamingos. Now, greater flamingo is the lightest shade of pink, and a group of them is called a flamboyance of flamingos. You may also be able to get one last look at this African elephant. If you look closely through the foliage here on our left, as I pass on by, yeah, you can kind of see her walking around back there. There's actually a few of them hanging out in the back. That looks like she's waving to us. <laughs> as you do pass on by here on our left hand side is a large pit of mud and hanging around it are the scimitar horned oryx here. And the scimitar horned oryx has long curved horns that are very useful as a back scratcher and they can also be used in a defense situation if they needed it. Uh, the scimitar horned oryx gets its name from its long curved horns that are shaped like that of a scimitar sword. Um, in addition to that, they can go about nine months without taking a single drink of water. In addition to that, they can, um, sorry, usually they don't sweat until their body temperatures reach over 115 degrees. So they're very well adapted to the savanna. And here on the left hand side, see if you can spot these two animals walking along the tree line up there. Cheetahs, yep. There are two cheetahs up there. There's actually a third one here as well, sitting in the grass. Uh -oh. Now cheetahs are known for their speed, but they're pretty good at camouflaging as well. They can run from zero to 60 miles per hour in three seconds. Now, although they reach that top speed very fast, they can't hold it super long. They can usually only hold it for about 300 yards, which most animals can actually outrun, which is why they have a pretty low success rate when they go out to hunt. Now, cheetahs get up to that top speed because of their sharp, non-retractable claws that are very useful in digging into the ground for them. There's actually one more land on this little bed of hay up there as well. 
Uh, now they have those sharp non-retractable claws that help them dig into the ground, but they also dig into the ground a little too much sometimes. So they're a little bit hard to sneak up on their prey because of those loud footsteps they have. Now as we turn the corner up here on our left-hand side, it's a very tall rock formation known as the Kopi. A lot, of, a lot of different animals like to hang out on top of these rock formations, such as the African lion. Now I do see one sitting up there. Let's see if we can get a get better view of him. Now the African lion is a nocturnal animal. They will sleep about 16 hours of the day most of the time. You can see the male lion sitting there with the female right no, next to him. Now they'll sleep about 16 the hours and then they're ready to go and hunt at nighttime. At night they have about six times better eyesight than humans do. Also here on the right hand side there's a little ostrich running around here. That is a female ostrich. You can tell by her little feathers there. They usually run about 40 miles per hour and surprisingly about as fast as them are these white rhinos here on the right as well. White rhinos can run about 35 miles per hour. Hour, so a little bit slower than those uh, ostrich, but much, much larger, of course. They weigh about 5,000 pounds fully grown. Now, African lions are very active at nighttime, but they're not so active during the day, as you see here. When they do go out hunting, it is the female lions that will do the hunting, while the male lion in the middle there will stay back and protect the cubs. Now, the main difference between the female and male lion, of course, that body of fur on the male's neck, and notice a mane. You can actually tell how old or how mature a male lion is by how dark that mane is. Now coming up here on our left hand side, my personal, one of the most adorable animals of the savannah, of course, is the warthog. You can see him bending on his little elbows there, very cute. They have those big tusks on the front of their faces there. Now those tusks are razor sharp, they're very good at protecting their faces, but their backsides are a little vulnerable. So they actually have a second set of burrowing tusks underneath those top ones that they can dig out their burrows with, help protect them at nighttime. Now here on the right hand side to get a closer look at these white rhinos here and we saw a black rhino earlier today but you can see they have a very different facial structure there that is the main difference between the two other than size they can weigh up to 5,000 pounds about 2,000 pounds heavier than those black rhinos or that black rhino we saw earlier and there's also a little pile of eggs here these belong to that ostrich we saw walking around there <clears throat> ostrich eggs are usually strong enough and dense enough where they can be left alone and nothing will uh, be able to harm them Usually they're so strong after the first 30 days of being laid that a full-grown human can stand on them and they won't even crack. They can see these little warthogs running around here. I told you they're absolutely adorable. Look at them run. Uh, if you look closely, you might be able to see that second set of burrowing tusks underneath this top one as well. Uh, now, warthogs don't always make their own burrows, although they're capable of it. If another animal has made a burrow for them, they will be more than happy to take that burrow over. Uh, as long as they can fit inside of it or maybe even make it a little bit larger for themselves, they'll be more than happy to take over that burrow for them. Now as we go around the corner, we're heading out of the savannah and into Magadi Glen. Here in Magadi Glen, you can see a lot more tree coverage than we saw in the savannah, and a lot more open space than we saw in the forest this morning. Now here on the left-hand side, you can see the warden's post and a few of his Nigerian dwarf goats running around, causing some trouble. One of them's even on the roof up there. Look at them. The Nigerian dwarf goats have those little stomachs that stick out. They have a multi-chambered stomach, and that multi-chambered stomach helps them digest all sorts of different foods that most animals can't eat. These animals can eat just about about anything. So they help eat harmful weeds that can cause damage to the underbrush, which is why you see all this grass starting to grow back here. Now in addition to that, they also offer a very sweet goat milk. Uh, and you can see there's some little legs, they're really cute. They're actually a miniature goat species from West Africa. Let me get one last look at those dwarf goats as we pass on by, and they are under, behind that fence since they are domesticated animals, much like dogs and cats are. Now that being said, friends, Sorry, with that being said, friends, we are heading back towards the village of Harambe, which unfortunately does mean our safari adventure together is coming towards a close. Although our safari is ending, your adventure is just getting started out there. There's all sorts of cool things to check out while you're walking around um, Harambe and Animal Kingdom in general today. Here in Harambe, you should check out the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. It's a really cool walking trail where you can see all sorts of different animals. Uh, maybe you can get a closer look at some of the animals we saw here today. Get a good ch uh, chance at a close encounter with an okapi, maybe some hippos in the hippo viewing pool, maybe even some of those gorillas as well. Now, if you need help finding anything today like that Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, be sure to use your My Disney Experience app. It can give you walking directions to anywhere you want, so you don't have to ask. You can actually just go find it on the app, click on it, and say get walking directions. Super easy, very helpful tool to have navigating Disney World. Now, if I have any wilderness explorers on board, you have been on Simba one with me here today. Simba is a Swahili word for lion. My one last Swahili word I have for you, friends, though, is Kwaharini. Kwaharini meaning go well in the hopes that they see each other again very soon. So, Kwaharini, friends, those of you on the right hand side, which is hands, arms, feet, and legs, doors will be opening. 
Yeah, no, no. Uh, any friends, watch that step and go well. If thank you. Any final questions, feel free to come on up and ask. If not, have a great rest of your day out there. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. That's so cool, man. It is.